Hey guys, today we're looking at a little broad-headed skink. Now, we don't have a whole lot of species of lizards here in Illinois, and Missouri has a few more than us, but not a whole lot either. This just isn't a very lizard-diverse area in the country. Um, but one of our cooler species of lizard is this guy, the broad-headed skink. Um, he's very, very, very similar looking to the five-line skink. Uh, both of them are exceedingly common throughout the entire area I live in. Um, you know, all around the Mississippi River, you can find both species, and they can be really, really difficult to distinguish apart from one another, um, because even as adults, they look almost identical. Um, the way you truly, truly identify these two guys apart from one another is if you look at what are called the upper labial or supralabial scales on this guy's face. He's got, see his nostrils right here, if you count backwards to just before his eye, there's a big scale right underneath his eye. If you count backwards from that nostril to that large scale underneath his eye, the broad-headed skink has five scales. This guy right here has five scales. That is how I know this is a broad-headed skink. The five-line skink will only have four. There's a couple other ways. Uh, you can look at the mid-row of scales underneath the tail, and the mid-row on a five-line skink is a little broader than the broad-headed skink. Um, there is a, a post-labial scale right before his ear, right at the corner of his jaw, that is different in five lines and broadheads. Broadheads have one, five lines have two. Um, there's a few little tricks, but really counting those lip scales is without a doubt the easiest way. Uh, you don't have to get too close to, you know, you don't have to get a magnifying glass out to really count them. You can see them pretty easily. Really easy way to do it. Um, really a neat lizard though. Uh, you can see this guy, he gets his name because he's got a very broad head. Um, the reason he has that broad head, he doesn't have that broad head all, all year. Uh, it's just this time of year, and really, actually, we're at the very, very end, so his head isn't actually as swollen as it could be maybe a month earlier than this. Um, they breed, they mate, in really about May, and so the males get this bright orange or reddish head and throat, and you can see he still has a little bit of it. It gets a little redder than that if it was in the height of his breeding season, and then his jowls swole up like that, and only the males do that. So I know that this guy is a male for sure, and I know that he has a broadhead skink for sure because his head... On the, the head on the broadhead skink gets a lot bigger than that on the five-line skink. It's another good way to tell the difference. Um, but really cool. It's awesome to see this time of year because of that bright orange on their face. Uh, he actually will lose that in probably a couple weeks. We're getting into June here, and uh, June is when they will start laying eggs, the females. He's already probably mated, uh, showed off that nice big head, got some ladies. He probably has a female somewhere that will be laying eggs within the next week or so. Um, you can see it's a fairly large lizard for this part of the country. Um, I wouldn't say it's a large lizard by any respect, but for around here, you know, we have the fence lizard, which isn't very big. We have the ground skink, which isn't very big. Um, these guys are fairly large, and this isn't even as big as they get. They get a little bigger than this guy. Uh, also, what these guys are known for is having kind of a nasty attitude. He will bite, and he likes to hang on. No problem. <laughs> These guys have quite a strong bite. You can see how you know large his jowls are. He's got a good strong bite. Okay, like that kind of hurts. And he'll pinch you. He's got some little teeth dug into my fingernail there. Um, come on, let go. Uh, another cool thing about this species is that when they're younger, they have those bright neon blue tails. You see, uh, the five lines and these guys both get that. Uh, that tail is a defense mechanism. Uh, if you look at this guy's tail, you can see he has broken his tail at some point. You can see it's starting to grow back a little bit. Um, skinks are notorious for losing their tails for, I mean, sometimes you grab them up here and their tail falls off back here. Uh, their tails are really, really easily broken and their tail actually will wiggle around on the ground and distract predators. And when it's bright blue and they're younger like that, it's really, really a good defense. Um, I'm lucky that when I caught this guy, I didn't manage to break his tail off. Uh, I unfortunately have broken tails before. It's really difficult to catch these guys. Most of the time I don't even mess with them. Uh, but he was in kind of a dumb place and I thought maybe I could catch him. Uh, this is a very, very difficult species to catch for sure. They are really fast, and they don't do stupid things like the fence lizards kind of do dumb things like go on the other side of a tree from you and think you can't see them. These guys, when you disturb them, they go up a tree, and they don't stop going up. They will go up 30 feet up in a tree, no problem whatsoever. And that, as you might imagine, makes it nearly impossible to catch these little guys. So um, I'm happy I got to see one of these. Uh, I never, hardly ever pay attention if it's a broadhead or a five line whenever I do catch them. Uh, they look so similar, and I usually just go, well, you know, it's a skink, whatever. Um, 
but we'll go ahead and we'll turn him loose. Um, he'll lose this broad head and this orange coloring here within the next couple days, probably. Actually, probably a couple weeks. And, uh, well, let's hope we see him around this area again sometime soon.